The biggest thing on my mind is, particularly after this decision on Friday, where the Roberts Court gutted Section 2 of the Voting Rights Act after gutting Section 5 in 2013. I mean, we're back in a situation like 1880s and 1890s when the Supreme Court was affirming Jim Crow voting laws that uh, excluded their aimed at black people. They also excluded about half the poor white people. There were literacy laws and poll taxes, and those were allowed to go through because they didn't explicitly uh, target black people, which would have been against the 15th Amendment. They're doing the same thing now. You read the Alito decision, it's like he's copying from these Jim Crow uh, justices back in the 1880s and 1890s. It's, it's really disgusting. And they obviously know what they're doing. So what we now have is a Republican Party that has no pretenses of democracy. They're smarter than, you know, being openly fascist and just banning all other parties. They want to rule by cheating. So we hear a lot about the voter suppression laws being passed in all these states. That's bad. But what's worse is they're setting up elections for partisan administration where they control the state legislatures and they will decide who gets elected, whether they got the most votes or not. And that can filter right up to the Congress and the presidential election in 2024, where these ruthless Republicans are prepared to basically reject the vote from states so they can get their person in. And the feckless Democrats don't know how to fight the ruthless Republicans. They, they're negotiating with themselves and losing because they can't get rid of the filibuster. They can't even modify it to pass the For the People Act. Yes, we had criticisms of the public financing proposal in that bill, but it did set federal standards to make voting easier. And for all its 800 pages, it didn't cover a lot of stuff, like this new issue of partisan voting administration, partisan vote counting. You know, they're setting it up so that Republican legislatures are displacing independent elected secretaries of state. Uh, down in Georgia, they've already moved Democratic and particularly black Democratic people from county boards of elections. So they're setting it up to basically, it's attributed to Stalin. He actually probably didn't say it, but he said, I don't care who votes as long as I get to do the counting. That's the way the Republicans are acting right now. And so it's a real danger. And, and the problem is the Democrats don't know how to fight back. Uh, and because they won't get rid of the filibuster, their whole program of liberal reforms, which we support, it's not as far as we want to go, but D.C. statehood, the DREAM Act, the Equality Act, the Protect Our Right to Organize Act, the $15 minimum wage, I mean, across the board, none of these things are going to pass unless the Democrats get rid of or at least reform the filibuster. And right now, there's no indication they're going to do that. We just have about, uh, I think it's 17, 16 days left for the Senate to be in session between now and Labor Day. And they got these infrastructure bills. They got to get a budget bill together. They got to deal with the debt ceiling. I mean, they're not going to deal with voting rights. It's it's a it's a real crisis, and so I wrote up about this uh, I, before the Supreme Court decision on Friday. I actually noted in an article that the uh, Department of Justice had sued Georgia on these voter suppression stuff, and this is before the uh, but and they sued under Section Two of the Voting Rights Act, which says if you can show a discriminatory effect. Uh, you can get that law thrown out. And the Justice Department said, we're gonna show intent as well as effect. So they, they feel they have a strong case, but now that section has been gutted. <coughs> so I have an article that came out in Counterpunch this weekend called Voting Rights Include the Right to Vote for Who You Want. You know, you can get the ballot, but if the people you wanna vote for are not on the ballot, then what good is that? That goes back to an old boss Tweed saying, which he did say, where he said, uh, I don't care who does the electing as long as I get to do the nominating. And the system excludes the Greens, you know, by ballot access. And then it excludes 
people being willing to vote for the Greens under the single member district winner take all plurality voting system, where you're afraid that if you vote for what you really want, you're going to help your worst enemy. And so then who does win the plurality winner gets all the power and everybody else gets no power, whether you're third party or you're the smaller major party in a district, you get no representation. And because most of these districts are uncompetitive, 90% of congressional districts, 95% of state legislative districts, everybody know who's going to win. And a lot of people don't vote. Why bother? You can't change who represents you because the district has been gerrymandered to represent the majority party, Democrat or Republican in most districts, in all districts, really. So why bother voting? That's why the non-voters are usually the biggest block of voters in most elections, because they know voting can't change anything under this single member district winner take all system. So anyway, this article basically says we got to expand the voting rights and pro-democracy movement to cover a lot of other things, particularly now that For the People Act has been defeated. And we have this, well, now we have the Supreme Court decision on Section 2 of the Voting Rights Act. So it calls for, and you can read about this, a constitutional right to vote. We don't have that in the U.S. Constitution. We have some amendments that say you can't discriminate on the basis of race or sex, but there's no affirmative right to vote in the Constitution. As the U.S. Supremes pointed out in Bush v. Gore, where they said, uh, when they stopped the count and gave the presidency to George W. Bush, they wrote in there, there's no affirmative right to vote in the U.S. Constitution. We need that in order to enforce every other uh, legislative uh, protection of our right to vote. So that's one thing. Fair ballot access. U.S. is off the charts in terms of petitioning uh, to get on a ballot. We need access to the ballot. We need nonpartisan election administration, like I was talking about before. Every other country in the world that's a credible democracy has an independent agency administering their elections. Here we have the governing parties administering their own election. That's a sign of autocracy. And excluding parties from the ballot is a sign of autocracy. For this country to call itself democratic, it doesn't meet the standards, the international standards. The Helsinki Watch set up uh, OECD, or what is it? Operation for Economic Cooperation and Development, I think it's called. They set up standards back in the 70s that were designed to criticize the old Soviet Union's lack of democracy. Well, since the Soviet Union fell, now it's the U.S. that gets criticized. And this country is so full of itself, cannot look at itself objectively. It's got to understand that it's fundamentally anti-democratic. So proportional representation instead of single member district winner take all. That's in this article. Uh, abolish the Senate. Now, existing constitutional channels make that virtually impossible, but we should raise that demand because the Senate is not even one person, one vote. It distorts uh, how representation goes. A voter in Wyoming has 134 times more power than a voter in California uh, in terms of their Senate representation. It's uh, just fundamentally unequal. And it's biased toward, you know, white, rural, conservative America. Uh, and so that's the Senate. And then the Electoral College, same thing. Because, of, you know, the Senate biases the, the Electoral College vote. Now, there's a way to get rid of the Electoral College without doing a constitutional amendment discussed in that article. Um, so, and then the other thing is real public financing, full public campaign financing, not this matching fund system that exists expands the inequalities between publicly funded candidates and basically excludes third party candidates like the Greens. So that's what's in the article. It's called the right to vote should include the right to vote for who you want. And it's all counterpunch this weekend. So uh, check that out. But I think this democracy crisis, you know, we ran on three major themes in, in 2020. The climate crisis and eco social Green New Deal the economic crisis and the economic bill of rights, the crisis of the new nuclear arms race and disarmament initiatives and treaties we should uh, get involved in and demilitarization. But now we got a fourth issue, just are we gonna have a democratic republic, even one as distorted as the United States is? That's what we're facing right now. And uh, we just can't be on the sides, we gotta fight back. 
I know the Poor People's Campaign, uh, Reverend Benjamin Barber. I got his first name right? Anyway, Reverend Barber, or William Barber. Um, yeah, William Barber. He, um, you know, he defined it as democracy versus autocracy in the last message he sent out. He's right. And he's calling for civil disobedience. You know, I would I would urge everybody to look for opportunities to raise hell about this. Um, because we just can't let, you know, Republicans set it up so they, you know, what's going to happen in 2024? Just through partisan <coughs> gerrymandering alone, the Republicans are going to gain 15 to 20 seats in the House. The Democrats have a four-seat majority right now. So after the Republicans gain in the House, with well, the next two years of the Biden administration, nothing's going to happen. And then, you know, they'll be trying to set it up to steal the 2024 election. Um, not that the Democrats are doing much, but the Republicans are, are worse. So we're in a serious problem here.